All right, I have logged into vector.com. I've started a new project and I am going to just drag and drop. I can click upload the little cloud or I can just drag and drop into what's called the artboard, this little square. It's perfect for logo design. And I can use the upload tool and navigate. If I have my, my stuff organized, it's gonna be assignment six. It's my sketch. So I can open it that way, or I can just drag and drop it in. And I recommend you, you work with your sketch a little bit digitally first. You know, in PhotoP, I tweaked mine a little, you know, from my original versions. Because once you have your sketch, this is now what you're, you're trying to cut out of black paper. You're trying to really refine and clean up. So I brought this in. I'm going to get a little sizing box before it's placed, just like we're used to in PhotoP. Doesn't really matter where it goes. When I hit return, it's placed, and you'll see on the left hand side, you now have a layer, and that layer is called image. It's not a path. Now, in order to do something with this image, I am going to double click it, and I'm not able to do all that much, right? But I can change its opacity. So I'm going to take its opacity down to about 50%. This is what's called in, in graphic design and logo design, this is called onion skinning. It's like putting a piece of thin tracing paper over your sketch so you can do see your logo a little bit more clearly. Because my sketch is so black already, I might even take it down to 25%. So I want to be able to see my vector shapes and anchors really clearly on top of it. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to create my first path. So remember I'm tracing around these shapes and I want to make all the black shapes. So it might make sense. I'll, I'll start with this little wing here. It says a lot of good anchors that I could just use the pencil tool and then just start drawing and it will automatically plot anchors for me as I draw. But it's not the same as using a brush tool in a raster program like PhotoP. I'm trying to get it to close. I didn't succeed, so I'm going to zoom in with Command Plus. And so you see how my anchor didn't quite close. So what can I do? I can double click on it. I can delete these anchor points because it plotted a lot. And then I can click on the last one and then extend that last one while I'm zoomed in to close. So now I have a closed path. And then I can say I don't want it to be, have a border. Instead, I want it to be filled. And I've already chosen that color to be black and it's remembering. But notice how this shape doesn't really resemble the sketch underneath. So what do I have to do? Well, when you use the pencil tool, it only plots straights. So you see in between each anchor, there's only a straight line. And if I want to curve, that means I have to go in and then double click them to change them into curves and then stretch them out. And because I have so many anchor points, that curve is going to be kind of lumpy and kind of weird. So every once in a while, I'll have to delete anchor points. And it will just take me a long time to clean it up. It's a way to work. You'll learn a lot about anchor points that way. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a pretty clunky cutout. And it's not going to be very smooth. It's like using little toddler scissors to cut out the shape rather than a, a nice sharp X-Acto knife. So the more professional tool is the standard tool of vector programs, and it's the pen tool. And instead of automatically plotting anchors as you go, like the freeform pencil tool, 
and then making it a little bit difficult to close your path. The pen tool only plots an anchor point when you click. And then it asks you, okay, click again for your next anchor point. And so you have precise control. And then if you click and drag, it will automatically turn that into a curve. And then the next one will also be a curve. And then it will be a straight again until you click and drag again to make it a curve. And then the next one will also be a curve. And it makes it a lot easier to close your paths and to keep them smooth. And you can plot straights and curves at the same time, for the most part. So let's try it this time. So I'm going to start here with straights. And I can always move them later. But I, I have a lot more control. Now I'm going to plot my first curve. So I'm going to go to the, the height of this curve and then click and stretch. And then it's going to end as a curve. And I don't get to control this curve with the handles yet, not until I finish the path. But this is pretty close to what I want. Then it's going to go to a straight again. So in order to make this a curve, I need to click, hold, and drag. And then it's going to give me another curve. And then I can click, hold, and drag to control it. And then it gives me another curve, which I don't want, right? Because it's going the wrong way. But I go to a place, and then I try to curve it out. So what's happening here? Well, I have one curve going into another curve, so I get an S. So I'll fix that later. You kind of learn when you have to change direction like that. So, gives me this shape. Now, why is this better? Well, it has so many fewer anchor points than my... Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. So, this is a path layer. I'm going to turn on the fill, turn off the outline. This gives me so many fewer anchor points to edit than when I use the pencil tool. And it allows me to just tweak them. I want to make that horizontal. I want to make this a truer vertical. I want to make this a truer horizontal. And then I can change straights into curves just by double clicking. Or if I think that's too strong, I can hit Command Z and I can change corners into rounded corners. So I have a lot of options. But if I double click it into curves, now if I hold down Command while I play with these handles, I can change the curve on each side. So I want the curve to match the underside of those glasses. Then I can move this point up a little bit. And in a way, it's actually helpful to keep it as a border so I can see my sketch underneath a little bit more clearly. But the pen tool allows me to actually improve on my sketch, right? And then here, I'm going to click it, double click it, make it straight. And this gives me a way, if I hold down um, Command, to change the curve on each side independently. I think I like how that looks. Then I'll, I'll make the glasses match. Same thing here. If I click it, I'll see the curves. And then if I hold down Command, I can edit them both independently. Sometimes you have to just move your anchor to a different part of the curve so it feels smooth. Now here is the weird one, right, where I have one curve going into another curve. And that gives me an S. So in order to get it to go to a point and then curve out again, what I need to do is totally change the direction of that curve by holding down Command. And now I have to shorten this curve, because the curve in this case is made by 
the handles on both anchors. And if I feel like it's too pointed there, this is where I might hold down shift while I stretch, and that will flatten it out. Or just try with command to get that to be a pretty straight line so it's not giving me a little point. Again, improving on my sketch. The idea is to get a better, cleaner version of my sketch in my, as my finished logo. So there's a lot of little tweaking that happens. But once you get it, it's a beautifully clean shape that you have full control over. And the best, most professional logo design, even though this is just an intro class, doesn't have any extra anchor points. It has only the anchor points it needs to look good. So on the left side, you'll also see that there's a little eyeball. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little eyeball, just like in PhotoP, so you can turn on and off different layers and paths. The only thing that's a little annoying is it can you have to click a few times off of it in order to see your cutout without the anchors. But I have a nice, clean, complex shape there. And it was easier to use the pin tool to do it than to try to layer up different ovals and cut out rectangles from it. But we're going to learn how to do those things as well. And if I'm really scrutinizing, I still see a little bit of a bump there. So I can always double click and just kind of move that point a little bit and then adjust the handle lengths because you want to plot your curves right at the at the height of the curve the apex of the curve and you can see why you don't want to make it out of too many anchors and you can see why having your sketch is very helpful underneath. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I have my first path. That's all one path because it's all connected. And I recommend you try to connect all of your paths because otherwise it will connect automatically for you and that in that way you lose control of your corners. Just like using the shape tools in PhotoP or Photoshop, when I start a new path or a new shape tool, it's going to, to create a new path automatically. So you don't need to automatically start a new layer. So I'm going to start at the apex of a curve here. Go to the next apex of the curve. Go around, but I can do Command Z if I change my mind and instead go to here. And it's going to round it out like that. Then go to here until I'm exactly vertical from my other point. And just move in a little bit as a straight. Go to the apex of that curve. Go to where the direction changes. This is going to be weird because this is a, a curved direction change, right? And I'll change it later. I can only change one side of it now. 
one side of it now.